Hey everybody, it's Rob Fines Treasure and welcome back to my channel. I thought we would do something different today. I've got nine coins that I'm submitting on my next PCGS submission. I've already got the submission form filled out. All I've got to do is add the labels to the flips, box it up, and send it on its way. And I figured before I do that, why don't I go ahead and just show you the coins that I'm submitting and the grades that I believe they'll get. So, with that being said, hopefully you guys enjoy this video and the close-ups of some of the beauties we're setting off to be graded. So before I turn the camera around and give you guys a close-up, with the macro lens of all the coins we're submitting, I want to let you know that originally this submission was 12 coins. I went ahead and removed three of the coins based upon close inspection. I thought, man, based on the value, it's not worth sending. I will make another note here and let you know that there's about three coins on this submission out of the nine that I am sending that technically based on the potential dollar value, they should have been included on their own submission form. This submission should have six at the gold shield level that I'm submitting at. And then the other three should have been a second set of forms and then maybe boxed up together. But at the end of the day, I'll spend the extra $12 per coin just to get them all in the same submission. Let's go ahead and flip the camera around and show you the coins up close. The first coin that we're going to show you is going to be this Buffalo Nickel. Now, it's a 1938 Denver, a tougher date to get, and it has full mint luster, no wear on the coin. I think it's an absolute gem. It's so nice that I believe it should fetch in that MS 6465 range, and for those wondering, that puts it about a $100 coin. Obviously, this is not one that I should submit with the rest of the coins that will be part of this submission, but I'm willing to pay the few extra bucks to get this one submitted with it. I don't have a 38D in a slab, and this is the nicest 38D that I have, and I just wanted to go ahead and get a grade on it. Anyway, MS-65 is my thoughts. Of course, you never know. Could be wrong, but I have an MS-65 1937, and they look pretty much identical. The second coin I have for consideration is this really nicely toned 1877 Liberty Seated Quarter. Now it's not just a regular 1877 Philly, it's an 1877 Carson City. And I'll tell you, many of you looking at it right now are like, man, that toning is odd. We've got some discoloration there. You know, I'm not naive that it might have had an old cleaning years ago, but the details on this coin are so fantastic, despite potentially being cleaned, that there's just no way I don't want to preserve it and get it slabbed. And again, maybe it hasn't been cleaned. Maybe it's just the toning. Maybe because it's 150 years old that it just looks like this, but... Anyway, I just wanted to show you guys, I have this, if it doesn't get a cleaned designation, I think this is a low mint state. If it gets a cleaned designation, it's going to be cleaned with unk details, most likely. I don't think it qualifies as an AU, almost uncirculated, because, I mean, look at this thing. It's absolutely gorgeous. I don't think it's been circulated at all. If anything, like I said, possibly had a cleaning maybe 100 years ago. But definitely want to get it graded. I love it. Next up, we have an 1897 Barber Quarter. I actually got this Barber Quarter in the same purchase as that Seated Liberty we just looked at. Same kind of toning. Now this one is not going to be a mint state. I've examined the details on it. Even though it is in fantastic shape, I put this one a high AU. I think it's probably in that AU 55 to AU 58 range, which makes it one of the lesser valuable coins in this submission, including that Buffalo Nickel. But it's been sitting in the I should submit bin for quite some time. And I just feel like it's time to go ahead and just get it submitted and get it slabbed. 
One of those ones that is an almost or as far as potentially being a clean coin two, but with the details that it exhibits, we're gonna go ahead and submit it and roll the dice. Next up, we have a capped bust half dollar. And again, it's got a great patina to it, but it's hard to see that original mint luster. I mean, the coin's so old. It's, it's, if it's been cleaned, it was cleaned quite some time ago because take a look at that rainbow effect. It's a really nice coin for being 190, almost 190 years old. I think this one still exhibits uh, AU details. I think the grade that I'm submitting it as is AU 53, assuming once again on these older silvers, it hasn't been cleaned long ago. Judging by the patina and the way that the cartwheel doesn't quite move right, it likely was cleaned a long time ago, but again, it's just time to get this protected. It's too nice of a coin, too nice of details. It shows great, it'll look great in a holder. If I can get a straight grade, I'll be really happy. But even if I end up only getting a AU details grade with the way this would look in a holder, I'll take that. You can't get mad at having a nice looking toned cap bust half dollar for your collection. Next up is another half dollar. This is a Liberty Seated, but this is the one with the arrows at the date and the rays around the eagle. It's a beauty. 1853, arrows at the date, and uh, rays around the eagle. Now, this coin I have is about an AU 53 to 55. It's definitely seen a little bit of circulation, so we know it's not gonna get a mint state grade which puts it in that AU 53 to 55 range. Anything better would be awesome, but if I can get a straight grade on it, I'll be happy. There's a couple of minor rim concerns, but none that I think would take away from it getting graded straight. Speaking of Liberty Seated, we've got a beautiful 1858. Oh, now this one is slightly better than the last one in my opinion. The other one I had eight, uh, as an AU 53 to 55. I have this one as an AU 55 to 58. It is right at that cusp. Maybe if they were going to be really considerate, they would give it a low mint state, like a 61 or 62. I think it has just enough wear on some of the high points, though, that it won't get a mint state grade. And of course, like I said, all of these coins, we got to pray they don't get any clean designation on them because whenever you have old silver like this, you just don't know if it was ever polished up, even if it was 120 years ago. So this one looks pretty authentic to me. Looks like it's in great condition. Definitely think if it gets a straight grade, it'd have no problem at least being in that high AU range. I'm praying for a high AU. Anything higher than that would be fantastic. Either way, 1858-0, beautiful Liberty Seated Half Dollar for consideration. The next coin I'm most excited about, and maybe I'm being just excited because it's my coin but this is an absolutely beautiful barber half dollar and i can't quite get it with all the different lights on it to show you that it has full mint luster on the obverse and the reverse but this thing is one of the nicest barber half dollars i have ever seen if I'm being honest. And it's a 1911 full mint luster. I think it's a high, mid to high mint state, to be honest. And based on its condition, I mean, look at that reeded edge. This thing has been in an airtight for a long time. And now it's in a Mylar flip and I'm even nervous about holding it. But personally, I have this one as MS-65. And when I looked at the MS-67 examples out there, 
I think it looks nicer, but I highly doubt PCGS would give me one of the top pops on this coin. But it's one of the nicest barber half dollars I have ever seen. And uh, yeah, it's time to get it graded. It's time to get it graded. We have full mint luster, a little bit of toning, full details, fields, everything looks great. I just don't see it being lower than an MS-65 in my opinion. I submitted it for an MS-65 because on this submission, that puts it at the max value I'm allowed to submit at. If it gets higher, obviously they'll charge me a percentage, but who knows? You guys can let me know down below. I know you're looking at a video, so you don't have it in hand, but I personally think that this is one of the nicest barber half dollars I have seen. Anyway, just wanted to show it to you. We'll see what it gets. I know there's a slight contact mark in the field in front of his chin, but that might keep it from being higher than a 65, but I just wanted to show it off. All right, two more coins left. We've got an 1876S trade dollar. It's got great details, but <clears throat> based on the discoloration, this has probably been cleaned a long time ago, but man, it has just about unk details. And I was looking at a lot of graded examples and a lot of them have the almost the exact same type of discoloration around the devices. And I just thought, you know what? I'm gonna roll the dice. Worst case scenario, I get cleaned. Unk details, I think. I don't think they'd give me AU details, but it is possible. But it's just such a nice trade dollar. A, I want to get it certified as genuine. B, I'd love to get a straight grade, but man, the, the toning and the discoloration is a little much. And if you look, you can see within the design elements, there is some darker spots. This coin could have been cleaned a long time ago, but I have to get it graded. If it gets a straight grade, I think it has enough details to get an MS-62 to 63. And the only reason why I said a 62 is because the eye appeal kind of has some detracting discoloration. But to me, it's definitely in that MS-63 range, assuming, like I said, it doesn't get a clean designation. 1876S, trade dollar, beauty. And then finally... It's just an 1897 Morgan silver dollar, but I only have an MS-62 currently in my registry because I just never have submitted an 1897 since the MS-62, so I figured I would submit this. I'm not expecting miracles here. It's a really nice Morgan silver dollar. Probably not worth submitting on this submission again because even if I get an MS-64, it's a $200 coin. So I'm thinking MS-63 to 64, which would allow my registry to have an upgraded coin because like I said, I only have an MS-62. And I looked at this one compared to it and it most certainly, most certainly is much nicer. So this is just a toss-in to upgrade my registry. Hopefully a grade 63 or better. And I uh, want to show you that one. Well, I think that's going to pretty much do it. We have quite the submission ahead of us. I know I rushed on some of the coins and I know some of you probably wanted me to take longer on some of the designs, but I don't want this to be a longer video than it already is. Again, I'm sure one or two of these, if not a few extras, might have been subjected to some old cleanings. But at the end of the day, all of these coins, cleaned or not, have such great details. It's just time to preserve them properly versus keeping them in airtights or in flips for the rest of their life. Well, that's going to wrap it up for today's PCGS pre-submission video. Hopefully, you guys like this kind of video. If you do, let me know in the comments down below. Also, don't forget to let me know in the comments down below if there's a particular coin or a couple of coins that you're like, Rob, you'll be lucky to get this at best. I wouldn't mind hearing your thoughts on their grades as well. Anyway, if you're new to my channel, 
please consider subscribing. It really helps me out. If you would like to check out my entire PCGS unboxing playlist, that'll be right here. Or if you just want to see how to submit coins online through PCGS's online submission forms, check out that video. As always, happy hunting and thanks for watching.